Welcome to Mark and Miguel. So today I have a subject that I need to uh, get my feelings across about, express about. So generally I coach, so I coach full time uh, and I do between about sort of 35 to 40 hour sessions a week. So around that, around that sort of figure, which is some people do a lot more, some people do less. So but that, that is a comfortable figure for myself and my brain to process and try and give a professional high level coaching session and feedback and help people between sessions as much as I can uh, any more on that then I think I'll be struggling. So the main bit that I've been that has been reoccurring recently is information overload on a massive scale. So I recently done uh, two days up at Archfield Links with Gary Nibble and Carl Morris, which was fantastic. Uh, great insight to uh, asking yourself the right questions, being in the, in the world of possible and having the right uh, attention in what your attention and intention of what you're trying to do, which is hugely important on the golf course. So when you're on the driving range, you are trying to develop something. So there will be something that is out of place, um, a smoking gun, which, which which ideally you attack and will make a huge difference to how you how you play. But the, that needs to be done on the driving range, especially if it's connected to the back swing, because that is doesn't hit the ball and that is not related to the target. So if you've got any kind of thing that you're working on that's on the back swing, then get on that range, have a practice, or even at home. And, and swing that club in the garden and just get that grinded in as quick as possible. So the drawing range is for development and the golf course is for performance. So if you have one swing put on the course, ask yourself that question of what shot you're trying to hit and how you're going to get that ball to the target. And if it's something connected to the follow through. So at the moment I'm, I'm trying to get through onto my lead leg to drive through to get forward as a fault, I would tend to stay back on it. And I noticed on the sports box app that when I finish, on average, I'm quite sure of how far I should be round. So quite a simple thought for me on an external thought is that I'm trying to get the right pocket further through at finish. And I can only do that if I've driven through on that front foot. That's connected to the follow through and relatable to the target. So I've been coaching now for just over about 20 years and it's changed a tremendous amount over over the last over those years when people were turning up and didn't really have much swing thoughts in their head so they had a little bit of information but not much and now they turn up with just shed loads of information and not really uh, pinpointed bespoke to them so they're doing something that is so far down the line they've got major major bit bigger problems than that as such, and they're, and they're trying to work on angle of attack, and you know, they've got the club upside down, so you know, why are you working on angle of attack? You, 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 your grip's not quite in place, your posture, so the fundamentals of that movement. So please, when you're, when you're trying to uh, improve your golf and play better golf, make sure that you try and get information from someone that is really knows about you what you're doing so they can help specifically to you picking out a, a random youtube video and trying to guess if that's relative to you is extremely difficult you've got to be extremely lucky the information might be quite good but you might not need that at that particular point you might not be able to put it in action uh, so, so even so you've got options of online coaching all sorts of options out there so please, if, it, if I know obviously money's involved, but just book a session in, build a relationship with the golf pro, and then and you can you can build from there. It depends how busy you are. You can work out the schedule. Think right, okay, so I want it once a month, once every two weeks, once a week. Depending how busy you are and how much you put into practice. So you need to get that on that practice field, on that driving range, in the studio, anywhere. So you can tick boxes, you've got to tick boxes. So you're trying to develop something and then you're trying to perform. So when you're on a golf course, 
It's all about the target. When you're on the range, it's a bit of both. So you're trying to stop swaying. So you do that for half the practice. I think, think I've got that, and then try and hit that ball at that target. Highlight that mistake, and then you feel comfortable with that. Just, just hit many random shots as possible, and that's the best way to try and move it to the golf course. And when you're on the golf course, don't always try and score. It's very easy to go out there and score every time, but just give yourself a little bit of a break. Go out there, just enjoy, play, and if there's something you're working on, put that into practice a little bit. But generally, just, just go out there and picture the shot, perform, and just enjoy around the golf. So there's pressure of not scoring every time. So any questions or comments, please send them through. Give the video a good thumbs up and I'll see you soon.